lesson 1-7 absolute value equations and inequalities. In this lesson, we'll be able to write and solve absolute value equations and inequalities. Let's start with model and discuss. Amelia is participating in a 60 miles pinathon. Her spin bike keeps track of the simulated number of miles she travels. She plans to take a 15 minute break within 5 miles of riding 30 miles. What does this mean? 15 minute break within 5 miles of riding 30 miles. So if you look at the graph, spinathon schedule is uh, start, they're going to start spinning at 10 a.m. They're going to stop for a break, we don't know, and resume spinning, we don't know. So in order to know th this, what is the more important information here? We know once they start stopping for a break it's gonna it's gonna be a 15 minute break but we don't know when the break is gonna start so right now we're more concerned with the five miles of riding a break within five miles of riding 30 miles what does that mean within five miles of riding 30 miles so will Amelia be taking her break at a set time at exactly at a, at a certain time? No, Amelia will be taking her break within 5 miles of riding 30 miles. That means she'll take her break after riding anywhere from before, 5 miles before 30 miles or 5 miles after 30 miles. So that's going to be 25 to 35 miles. So part A, write a compound inequality that models the number of miles Amelia spins before taking a break. We just talked about it. So the, the number of miles she's going to spin before taking a break would be within 5 miles of riding 30 miles. So anywhere between 25 miles and 35 miles would be where she's going to take the break. How is the number of miles Amelia spins before she takes a break related to the amount of time before she takes a break? How are they related? The more she spins, what happens to the time that she takes a break? The more she spins before she takes a break, the longer it'll be until her break because she's she's spinning at the, at the same rate. So the more miles means she's going to work more and the break is going to come later. Okay, so let's write that down. The more miles Amelia spins, spins before um, she takes her break, the longer it will be until her break. Okay. So part C, make sense and persevere. About how many hours will Amelia spin before she takes a break? Discuss how you could use your mathematical model to complete a spinathon schedule. So now, what are we going to use? We're going to use the inequality and try to figure out how much time would it take for her to run 25 miles and 35 miles and see where it uh, where the range is the, where she's gonna take the break in between right so 25 and 35 are distances remember the distance formula distance is always equal to the rate times the time. So we know the rate here, 22 miles per hour. She's going to spin at a constant rate of 22 miles per hour. We know the distance, 25 and 35 for the inequality. So the only thing we need to set up is the time. So t is equal to distance divided by rate if we change this formula into t. So this is the literal equation for t d divided by r would be the literal equation for d, t. And now solving for that, um, we can set up this 
exact inequality using the time. So 25 is the minimum mile that she's gonna take the break. How much, how many, it, how many hours it takes for her to ride 25 miles would be distance divided by rate. Her rate is shown here, 22 miles per hour. And so that will be less than the time, that's the minimum. And the maximum is going to be 35 divided by 22. And so you just simply have to calculate it. You will see that 25 over 20, 22 would give you 1.136 repeated. So it's going to be about about 1.14 let's say let's write this in a in a complete sentence so Amelia will spin for between about 1.14 hours and 1.59 35 divided by 22 is 1.59 zero nine zero repeated so 1.55 um and about and about 1.59 uh, hours before taking a break this information can be used to calculate how long after 10 a.m Amelia will take her break. She will resume biking 15 minutes after she starts her break. So we don't know the exact time she's going to take the, take the break, but once she starts taking the break, um, she's going to resume 15 minutes after that. And we know that she's going to take a break between 1.14 hours and 1.59 hours. Okay, that was a good start of thinking for this lesson. So the essential question for this lesson would be why does a solution for an absolute value equation or inequality typically result in a pair of equations or inequalities? What does that mean? It means that typically the solution for absolute value equation or inequality will be a pair of equations or inequality. Let's see what that means. Example one, understand absolute value equations. What are absolute value equations? Part A, what is the value of x in seven is equal to absolute value x plus two? What if we have an absolute value of x? What does absolute value mean? Absolute value, you know, is the distance, be uh, distance between the number and zero. So what does that have to do with it? And you know that distance is always positive, so it makes all the numbers inside the absolute value um, positive. But what does that really mean? So first, let's solve for x by isolating the absolute value expression on one side of the equation. So isolate the absolute value equation by subtracting 2 on both sides. You get absolute value is equal to 5. That means your x your number, your answer, has to be 5 units away from 0. So the distance from 0 has to be 5. That means absolute value of x equals 5, which is the distance of, of x from 0 has to be 5. So both negative 5 and positive 5 are 5 units away from 0. So in this case, you have two answers. The solutions are both x equals negative 5 and x equals 5. So absolute value will often give you two answers because there could be two different directions for distances, counting distances from 0. Okay, part b, what is the value of x in absolute value 2x minus 3 equals 1? You're going to write and solve equations for the two possibilities. We're going to assume that 2x minus 3 is positive. And we can also assume 2x minus 3 is negative because even if it's negative, that absolute value sign will make it positive and it could make it positive 1. 
So we're going to assume both cases that are both, pos that, that are both possible and solve for each case. So 2x minus 3 is equal to 1, positive 1, or 2x minus 3 should equal to negative 1. Solving for x, we have x equals 2 and x equals 1. The solutions are both are both x equals 2 and x equals 1. If you check by plugging in x is equal to 2 and x is equal to 1, they'll both end up with positive 1 because of the absolute value that makes everything positive. Okay, part C. What is the value of x in 3 absolute value, x plus 6 absolute value close, plus 8 equals 5? Now it's a more, it's a multi-step uh, absolute value equation. But you, you know how to solve for equations and isolate the variable. Um, the only difference is that we have an absolute value. So step one, we're going to isolate the absolute value expression. So solve for everything and isolate the absolute value. We're going to subtract 8 on both sides and divide 3 on both sides to get our absolute value of x plus 6 is equal to negative 1. And now, before we even think about these two possible scenarios, absolute value always has to be positive. Your distance cannot be negative. So if you see any absolute value that is isolated by itself is equal to a negative number, it means the equation has no solution. So do not solve further and solve for x with different, different cases. There is no solution in this case. Okay, we looked at three different scenarios of solving absolute value equations. Now it's your turn. Try these questions 1a, b, and c. Pause the video and solve by yourself. Come back when you're ready for answers. Okay, are you ready? So, uh, part A, you're going to isolate that absolute value and get what? 6 plus 2 is equal to absolute value of x, right? And then you're going to have x is equal to absolute value of x. And so in this case, you have two scenarios. You can have positive x or positive 8 or negative 8 that are 8 away from 0. So your answer is positive 8 and negative 8. Okay? Hmm. Alright, part B. 2 times absolute value x plus 5 is equal to 4. You're going to do the same thing, but isolate the absolute value by dividing, dividing by 2. So you get an absolute value of x plus 5 is equal to 4 divided by 2 is 2. And in this case, you can have different scenarios, two different scenarios. a plus 5 could be positive 2. Or you can have a plus 5 that could be a negative 2. And solving for x, you get x could x that could equal to negative 3. Wait, yeah, negative, negative 3. And x that could equal to negative 7. Because negative 5 plus 2 is negative 3, negative 5 minus 2 is negative 7. So you have two answers for this one as well. All right, part C. Um, this, this is already isolated, and the absolute value is equal to a positive number, so this will have answers. So solve for two scenarios. 3x minus 6 could equal to a positive 12, or 3x minus 6 could equal to a negative 12. 
Solving for the first case, you will have 3x that's equal to 18. So 8x should equal to uh, 6. And then solving for this one, uh, 3x is equal to negative 12 plus 6, so that's negative 6. So x is equal to negative 2. So your answers are x is equal to 6 and x is equal to negative 2. Alright, if you got all of them correct, good job. You're good for the absolute value equation. All right, example two. Let's apply an absolute value equation. The cruising speed of Kennedy's boat is 25 miles per hour. She plans to cruise at this speed for the distances shown in the diagram. What equation models the number of hours, x, that Kennedy will travel? So the distance Kennedy actually travels would be the rate times the time, number of hours, which is the distance, minus 80, because the final distance from the 80 mile point would be 80. And so in order to figure out the distance between two points, you find the difference of them. So 25x minus 80 would represent the distance between them. And you make it an absolute value. And that distance has to be 10 miles from the 80 mile point. So from the 80 mile point, it could be plus 10 miles or minus 10 miles. And that could be represented as this absolute value equation. So part B, what are the minimum number and the maximum number of hours Kennedy will travel? So solving for this equation, um, you can write two cases. 25 minus 80 could be a positive distance 10. 25x minus 80 could, could be negative 10 distance away from 80. So then solving for each x you get 3.6 and 2.8. And so Kennedy will travel at least 2.8 hours and at most 3.6 hours. Using the same equation and the problem, uh, let's, let's look at try number two. See if you can do it by yourself. What will be the minimum and maximum time that Kennedy will travel if she re resets her cruising speed to 20 miles per hour instead of 25? So all the other information uh, is still, is still t uh, the same, but you're, you're going to change the speed from 25 to 20 and solve for the equation. See if you can solve it by yourself. Come back when you're ready for answer. Okay, so solving for that, you have two equations as well. Now you have 20x minus 80, that's equal to 10. And 20x minus 80, that's equal to negative 10. And you solve for both. And so you have 20x, that's equal to negative 70. Wait, sorry. Uh, if you add 80 on both sides, you'll get 90. And this one, 20x, this one, 20x is equal to, if you add 80, 80 minus 7, 80 minus 10 is positive 70, okay? And then x should be 9 over 2, which makes it 4.5. And here, x is 7 over 2, which makes it 3.5. So, it means that Kennedy will travel at least... 3.5 hours and at most 4.5 hours. Okay, let's look at example three, understanding absolute value inequalities. Let's try to understand how it works. 
So what are solutions of an absolute value inequality? We can solve in graph two absolute value inequalities. Part A, absolute value of x less than three. How do we graph this as a solution? Absolute value x less than three. Inequality is, uh, is when you have greater than or less than, something not equal to. So inequality, uh, inequality and absolute value together makes something, um, makes compound inequality. So absolute value x less than 3 is equivalent to the compound inequality. x is less than 3 and x is greater than negative 3 because that 3 could either be positive or negative, right? But if you have a negative, that means you're looking at a different direction. So when you change your direction, you also have to change your sign. So when you're changing from positive 3 to negative 3, you also have to change the sign. So please remember that. And remember that if your absolute value is less than, then it's a compound inequality of and. And if your absolute value is is greater than the other um, side, then it's a compound inequality of or. And that makes x, x less than negative 3 and x greater than the, the flipping uh, sign rule applies um, here as well. Greater than becomes less than when, it, when 3 became negative 3. Okay, just remember uh, to flip the flip the inequality sign um, when you change the sign. Okay, and that's how you graph um, the compound inequalities, and we already learned this from the last lesson. Now it's your turn. Try number three. Solve and graph the solutions of each inequality. See if you can solve for the two solutions for parts A and B and graph the compound inequality. Um, come back when you're ready for answer. Are you ready? So what are the two inequalities that you can write for part A? In order to get rid of the absolute value, you can either write x is greater than 15 or x is less than negative 15. Remember to change the sign. And then solving, uh, this is already solved. So uh, drawing this, graphing as a solution, you'll have negative 15 here. And you'll have an open circle. And x is less than negative 15. So it goes this way. You'll have positive 15 here, and you have an empty circle, and x is greater than 15, so it, the arrow goes this way. So you know that a uh, compound inequality of or will usually end up in with arrows that go different ways. Part B, as the value x less than or equal to 7, we'll have x that is going to be less than or equal to sub positive 7 and x less than or equal to no greater than or equal to negative 7 Okay, and then you graph the solutions because those are already solved for you. Negative 7 is right here on the left side. And you need to fill in your circle because the answer is inclusive. X is greater than, so it goes this way. And then 7, positive 7 is here. And this is also inclusive, so you shape the circle. And x is less than positive 7, so it goes this way. So they meet together. 
And these are how the absolute values in inequalities would be solved. All right, let's apply that. Example four, write an absolute value inequality. Members of the debate team are traveling to a tournament where they will stay in a hotel for four nights. The total cost for each member must be within $20 of 175. Does that sound familiar? Yeah, it's from the beginning of the lesson. Within $20 of 125, what does that mean? It's gonna be $20 either more or less than 175. So it's gonna be 175 plus 20 or 175 less than 20 okay let's write let's write an absolute value inequality to represent the situation we got hotel a which costs 40 dollars per per night hotel b 45 dollars per night hotel c 50 dollars per night so um writing the inequality you can write the difference between the total cost and 175 that needs to be less than or equal to 20. Why? Because the distance from 175 needs to be less than 20. Okay? So if you have a number line, here's 175. That is your, that is your um, budget. And you can have a maximum plus 20 of that, which is 195. And then your minimum is minus 20 of that, which is 155. So now you know the minimum and maximum value. And your hotel cost should be uh, in between that. So whatever your hotel is, your cost per night times four nights would give you a total cost for for the four nights. So solving for this absolute value inequality, you can find the maximum cost and the minimum cost. And the maximum cost that you can consider per night is 48.75. The minimum cost that you can consider per night is 38.75. And the hotel that uh, that satisfies those equations would be hotel A, 40 is between these two values, and 45 is also between these values. Hotel C is not affordable. So only hotels A and B would be um, considered. All right, let's look at trial number four. If the debate team increase a limit to 200 plus or minus 20, so within $20 of 200, would they be able to afford hotel D at $55 per night? Explain. So there are two ways of solving this. See if you can do solve it by yourself first and come back um, when you're ready for the two answers, two ways of solving this answer. Okay, first of all, what do you need to do? You can either write the absolute value equation like that and then solve for it for the maximum cost and the minimum cost again. Or you can solve for the minimum and maximum cost that you can have and, and uh, figure out the cost for four nights for Hotel D separately. Okay, does that make sense? So I'll explain both ways so method one you can set up the in set up the inequalities set up the absolute value inequality that says 4x minus 200 now is less than or equal to 20 Okay, and that becomes 4x minus 200 is less than or equal to 
20. Solving for that, you get 4x less than or equal to 220, which gives you x that's less than or equal to 55. And then, on the other side, you have 4x minus 200, that's greater than or equal to 20, negative 20. And so you have 4x, that's greater than or equal to 180, and so your x is greater than or equal to 45. So that's your minimum value per, per night, minimum cost per night. And you can see that Hotel D is $55 per night, and this is inclusive, so you can afford Hotel D. Another way in solving this is multiplying uh, 55 by 4 nights and, t and see how much it'll cost, 220. And your minimum is 200 minus 20, which is 180. And your maximum is going to be 200 plus 20, which is 220. So you know that uh, you, can, you can afford Hotel D. So let's summarize that. Yes, if they, spend, if they spent $55 per night, the total cost, the total cost will be 200 plus 20, which is equal to 220. Okay, so those are applications for absolute values and inequalities. Let's wrap up our lesson. Absolute value equations and inequalities. So absolute value equations, in order to solve them, you need to isolate the absolute value expression, and then you're going to write two equations and solve. You can, uh, you can graph the answer, the solutions on the number line. Absolute value inequalities uh, will give you compound inequalities. So if an inequality uses less than or less than or equal to, and these symbols point to the variable in the solution, the solution uses and. If an inequality uses greater than or greater than or equal to, less, greater than or greater than or equal to, and these symbols point to the variable in the solution, the solution uses or. And you can graph the solutions using the inequ inequalities on the number line. If you have to graph the solution, uh, that are exactly 8 and 26, uh, exactly the numbers like that, you just put a point. You don't have to draw an arrow. Okay, that was the end of Lesson 7, Absolute Value Equations and Inequalities. And that's the end of Topic 1, Solving Equations and Inequalities. Great job for um, listening to all the lesson videos. We'll continue with Topic 2, Linear Equations, in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye!